You just bought your first dreamy website template from Show It and are so excited to put it to you. Where do you start? And what's the first thing you need to do in order to make that customizing process easy breezy? Today, I'm gonna to be breaking down the first four things you need to do before you start customizing your Show It website. My name is Carissa and I am a show website designer dedicated to helping you polish your presence online. The most important thing you need to do before you start customizing your show website template is to nail down your branding. Yes, the four things that I'm going to be talking about in this video have nothing to do with actually using and customizing the website template itself. When your website starts from a really strong foundation with your brand, that's where you can really break through the noise and stand out in this saturated industry that you're in. Now, the first thing you need to do is determine your colors. I like to have eight colors, and while that might kind of sound like a lot to start with, let me break down my strategy for this. You'll want to consider the four elements of a really strong color palette. For me, those are a dark tone, a mid tone, a light tone, and a pop color. And when you have these four colors that complement each other well, you're off to a really good start. Now, when designing your website, there might be some instances and probably several instances where you're gonna need like a black or a white or variations of those two colors. So maybe like a dark charcoal or a really soft cream color. So throw those two into the mix now as well. Now we're already up to six of those eight colors really quickly here, and that leaves us two slots left. Now, if there's another color that you're dying to use here, certainly throw that into the mix if it balances with the other color. But I like to leave room for one or two colors that are simply just shades like lighter or darker of some of the other colors that we've already chosen. Maybe my favorite color or my the one color that I'm gonna be using most often in my brand. But that's a good way to find your two other colors. Now, once you have your colors figured out, you can actually preset them into your entire website template so that the whole website automatically adjusts to those colors and looks like you're branding right from the get-go. Changing out the color palette makes the website look totally different. This is what's gonna really make this website template unique to you and stay out from the other people who may have bought this website template. So how do we do this? Let's head on over to my computer. We'll pop into the show website builder now. Once you're logged in, make sure you're under the site tab. Up at the top left, hit design settings to see the color palette that came with your website template. You'll see eight color settings there, which is perfect because that's how many colors that you just came up with. Now all you need to do is pop in that hex code from the colors that you chose and that will populate them into that bar full of colors. I recommend definitely sticking to the pattern of dark to light from left to right because that's the way that this website has been designed. And you might run into some troubles of some things maybe not showing up right or just looking kind of weird on the website template. And regardless, you might have to do some tweaks to these anyway, or tweaks to the actual website design itself down the road, but this will get you started in a really good direction in making this website your own. Now, if you don't have the hex code, but maybe you have like the CMYK or the RGB code for those colors, it's really easy to find that hex code by just going to Google and typing in RGB to hex or same YK to hex converter and that'll give you those hex codes to throw right into the show it application. Now when you hit save all of those colors will populate into the colors that were preset into your design before and now it looks like it's totally yours. And while you might need to make some tweaks as needed, you're all set to go to move on to the next step before you customize your website. Now the next thing you need in your toolbox before starting into your website customization, a logo. Now if you don't already have one created, that's definitely the first step. And if you want someone to help guide you along that whole process for you with your mood board, colors, fonts, your logo design itself, I'd love to chat with you more about helping you along through this process. But when customizing your website, it's important to have either a PNG or SVG version of your logo. Why is this? It's because those versions will have a transparent background so that when you place that logo on your website and you're putting it over a different color or maybe a photo, that doesn't have that sometimes tacky looking white box surrounding your logo. See what happens when I put this JPEG version of my logo here in the footer of my website. 
It shows with that white background box around the logo. Again, can appear a little bit tacky. We want a polished website, right? Now, another thing when preparing your logo is making sure that you have a couple different variations of your logo to use on your website. The main ones that I'm talking about are having one logo with like your primary brand colors, another that's all black, and then one that's all white. Now, will you actually use all three? Well, you may, but you may not. But it's definitely nice to have them handy in your toolbox in case one of your logos isn't looking quite right on top of like a color background or an image. Now, once you have that logo all ready, it's time to upload it to show it. That way it'll be ready to go there for when it comes time to actually customizing your website. So when you log in to show it, you can find your media library at the very top left of the screen. All you need to do is hit upload files on the bottom left Answer all of your logo versions into the program, and then now you're ready to go for when it comes to time to design. Now a pro tip, upload a favicon version of your logo. Now what is a favicon anyway? This is a little icon that appears up on the top of your browser in that little tab that shows the name of the website. It's that little pictogram that shows up next to that description. So like when you're on Facebook, that little blue circle with the F inside is Facebook's favicon. So if you wanna appear a little bit more legit, it's really nice to have that favicon up there and it'll make you recognizable when someone has multiple tabs up on their computer and they can't remember which one to go back to to find your website. Now, just like you have your colors ready before customizing, you wanna have your fonts ready as well. Now, of course, you can use the fonts that are uploaded into the design already, but if you have your own brand fonts, You'll wanna be sure and put this into the website builder before you start customizing. First of all, if you do choose to use the preloaded fonts that came with the design, make sure you check to see if there's one that you need to purchase first. It is illegal to use a font that you do not have a license for personally. Now, Google Fonts is actually a great resource to find some free fonts that are totally fine for anyone to use. And actually, these are already preloaded in to show it ready for you to use if you'd like. So there's no need to get a license for those. I'm talking about fonts that designers have created to sell online. So how will you know if you need to buy the fonts? Check the product description of the template that you purchased. It should say there. And if in doubt, just go ahead and reach out to the designer that you purchased the website template from and they should be able to tell you and show you a link to where to where you can actually purchase that font from. Font designers will and really do come after people who, who, you, who are using fonts illegally. So it's really something that you need to check on before using it in your website. Now, when you go to add that font, you'll go into your show it account and again, go to your design settings on the top left under the site tab. Hit the fonts tab. You'll see all of your templates preloaded fonts there on the right. These are the ones that, that are already being used in the template. Now, if you wanna add a font from Google Fonts, you could just choose the font here on the left, change the style of it, such as bold or italic, and then you'll want to add whatever styles you might need in your design. So just go ahead and add those there. Now you can't really easily see which font looks like what. So if you wanna be able to see those ahead of time and pick them all out and then add them in your show account, you can just hit this Google Fonts button here and check them all out on their website. Now, if you're looking for a place to find some premium fonts to put into your design that are maybe something that other people are not using, Creative Market is a great place to look. They have hundreds, if not thousands of different fonts that you can purchase to incorporate into your website and brand it. Just be sure that you're gonna be able to have access to like a web font or a WOFF file in order to use on the web. Now, if you wanna install that into your website builder to use in your design, you just have a few more steps to do. First, you'll open your media library. Hit uploads and choose that WOFF version of the font that you wanna add. Once it's in your library, you can head back over to your font settings. On the left, you'll see the option for adding custom fonts. As you click on the dropdown, you should be able to find the, the file name of the font that you just uploaded. Click on it and then name it, and then you can go ahead and add that custom font to your selected fonts on the right side of the page. The list here on the right is now all of the fonts that you're gonna have access to when you're customizing your website. Just like you had the color settings that will adjust globally to all of the different colors on your website, now you have fonts that are gonna be able to do the same thing. Now let's head back over to the site style tab in order to do this. The bottom half of this screen has your type styles. These are preset styling options so that basically all of your paragraph text looks the same anywhere you have it on your website. 
and like all of your titles will have the same styling settings and so on. This keeps everything looking super consistent and polished on your website. There's really no need to have several different styles because it makes things look messy and disorganized on your website. Sticking primarily to these styles can help you avoid that. So you can preset four different styles, a title, heading, subtitle, and paragraph text. To change the styling options for each one, just hit the three dots and then you can go ahead and change out the font size, the line height, default color, paragraph alignment, letter case, and more. And it'll let you set that mobile text separately, which is really nice because sometimes you don't exactly want the same, same settings for both the mobile and the desktop, like the size, or maybe you just want them just a touch different. So it's nice that they let you change that there as well. But for the most part, I definitely recommend keeping these pretty similar between the two to keep things looking very consistent. So then when you're done, you just hit save to lock those in. Now, once you do that, you'll notice that things will start to look a little bit funky on your website. So you might need to go back and adjust those global settings a little bit or just tweak the each setting on its own in the website builder when you're customizing it in a way of maybe just like breaking those global rules. But now you can see that when I go to add a text box to the design, I can select one of my four preset sty text styles and it adds it in just the way that you see it set up in your settings. So keep watching this series to see how to add all of your words and copy into those template placeholders and actually make the changes to the text boxes themselves. Now the fourth thing you want to do when you prepare to customize your show website is prepare your photos. So let me be really clear, you cannot use the photos that are preloaded into your show website template. As template designers, a lot of times we do use free stock photography for these websites, but in most cases, a photographer has donated their photos for use in these website designs. So therefore they are their photos and not yours. So you cannot use them in your website. You do have to change them all out. Now, whether you have like professional branded headshots or you're using styled stock photography, either is perfect or even a combination of both is great as well. But just make sure that you do change them all out in your design. So how do we add these into your website builder? Actually the same way that you added in your logos before, through the media library. So again, on the left, you'll be able to open up your media library and just hit upload at the very bottom. Then you can just upload all of your photos into your media library to have them there and ready to go when you actually wanna go ahead and insert them into your website template. So again, before you start customizing your Show It website, you wanna have all of your colors selected and inputted. You wanna have your logos created and uploaded into the program. You wanna have your font selected and preset in your settings. And you wanna have all of your photos added to your media library. With all of these things taken care of, you're locked and loaded to start designing your website. Now, if you wanna run down on where all of the settings are found in Show It and how to start navigating around customizing your website, be sure to click that next video on your screen and I'll see you there.